Hi, welcome to Burning Bush World Ministries. My name is Latina Cates. Father God, let me say everything that you want me to say. Let me do everything that you want me to do. And let this word fall on good ground, that the listeners would indeed be hearers of your word and that they would make application to your word, not only for today, but for a lifetime in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. I said that the kingdom of God is at hand. That means the Lord God Almighty, who is the supreme authority and all of his miracle working powers is still in control. And as a member of the body of Christ, that means his power and authority are available to you. That's power to lay hands on the sick and see them healed to speak to storms, to cast out demons, and so much more. And so that you can hear me more clearly, I command every demonic spirit under the sound of my voice to shut up and submit to Father God's authority and to mine as an ambassador of Christ on the earth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, Kings, the title to today's message is Getting to Know Father God. Now, to know Father God, you will have to read and study the Bible. I said you have to study the Bible. You have to pray, you have to worship Him, and you have to spend time with Father God. In my messages, Father God, Father God, judgment in you, the love of the Father, uh, the Father is family, and, and many others, I have told you about a number of the Lord's characteristics. Amen, amen. And today I'm going to expound on, on some of the things he likes and doesn't like, okay? Now, one of the Lord's names is Elohim, which means creator. The Lord is the creator. He made everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, God made it all. Amen, amen, amen. So let's go over to the Gospel of John where it says in chapter one, verses one through three, it says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen, amen, amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26, it reads this way, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. My point is, God made everything. He is the creator. Amen? We're the created, but he is the creator. He's the potter. Amen? And we're the clay. Hallelujah. 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 With that said, what I want to point out today is that the Lord has rules and laws about his land because the land is actually the Lord's, amen? In fact, he evicted people and nations because of those laws. It actually started in the very beginning with Adam and Eve. You know, they got put out of the Garden of Eden because they didn't follow the Lord's rules, amen, amen, amen. You may ask, well, Latina, what are those laws? Well, those laws are found throughout the scriptures. But specifically, they're found in the book of Leviticus. Now, I can hear some of you talking and saying, but Latina, that's the law, and we're no longer under the law. You're correct. We're no longer under the law, and we're under grace. But some things still apply, even though we're under grace. Some of the things that I'll be talking about today, again, some of the things that I'll be talking about today is, it goes into the New Testament. 
and it's throughout the Testament, okay? And I'll give you some of those scriptures later on. But let me first tell you about these rules and these laws about Father God's land. They can be found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, and when they say man, they mean mankind. If a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Here are the rules, starting at verse six. None of you shall approach any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Now what the Lord is talking about in verses six, Leviticus 18, 6 through 18, it goes into this and it forbids sexual intercourse between brothers and sisters, fathers and daughters, mothers and sons, um, sex with brother-in-laws or sister-in-laws or aunts and uncles or half-brothers and half-sisters, sex with your neighbor's wife or husband, and the Bible calls that wickedness. Verse 19 talks about having sex when a woman is having her menstrual cycle. Amen. Sorry to be so graphic, but I need to clarify this. Verse 21 goes on to say, not to allow your seed to pass through the fire to Moloch. Now, Moloch was a false god, which the people offered their children to as a burnt offering. Amen, amen, amen. Not only were they offering their children to a false god, but obviously they were worshiping a false god. Amen. And they were killing their children by sacrificing them to this false god. Now, as you recall, one of the Ten Commandments is, thou shall not kill. Uh, do you think that commandment is still valid even though we're under grace? I think it is. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to hold your place there for a minute and I want you to look at Proverbs 6.16. Proverbs 6.16 speak of six things that the Lord hates. And I'm going to read these to you. And it says the seventh is an abomination. An abomination means um, abomination means extreme disgust, uh, hatred, dislike, distasteful. Amen. Loathsome. He abhors it. It's loathsome to him. These are a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. And I think killing kids is shedding innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speak of lies. And he that, that soweth discord among the brethren. Those are six things that the Lord hates. And again, killing kids. Uh, Innocent blood, shedding innocent blood is one of them. Amen, amen, amen. Kings, viewers, I'm talking about getting to know Father God. Now, let's continue on with Leviticus 18, verse 22. It says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. This is repeated in Romans chapter 1, 
verses 24 through 27, which I will read to you real quick. And it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to unclean uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. He let them go ahead and have their way. He gave them up to it because they lusted it so bad. Go ahead and have your way. You remember now, God will not make you do something. He always gives you a choice. Um, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So he let them go ahead and dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, as I said, God is the creator. We are the creature or the created. Okay? We're the creator. So because they wanted to worship and exalt themselves more, he let them go ahead and do what they wanted to do. Verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which was against nature, into that which is against nature. And likewise, just in case you didn't understand that, this is going to make it real clear here. Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves that recompense or payment, if you will, of their error, which was meat. And what was that payment? Well, sexual transmitted diseases and AIDS. So these type of things are repeated over and over in the New Testament. Things that should not be done in God's land. Amen, amen. So we see same-sex intercourse is forbidden. Now, back to Leviticus for the rest of this, the rules and laws. Verse 23, Leviticus 18, verse 23. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down to it. It is confusion. Did you hear that? Having sex with animals is forbidden. Do you guys realize that I'm sure some of that goes on, but that's the only thing that America has not said yes to? They've said yes to everything else, but they haven't said yes to this. And again, I'm not saying it's not going on. Amen. It's just that America hasn't legalized it. They haven't authorized it. Verse 24, defile not yourself in any of these things. That's what God says. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So he kicked people out of their country, out of their land, because they did not follow his rules. They did these abominable acts. Did you hear that? He kicked them out. He evicted them. He locked them out. So let me ask you, does the Lord have rules about his land? Yes. Are they still in effect, even though we're under grace? Yes. Verse 25. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out their inhabitations. Land dry up. The land it won't produce. Different things happen because of what the people are doing in the land. Amen, amen, amen. So, so let me just summarize this. What the Lord is saying. People and nations were removed because they committed abominable 
sexual sins. They shed innocent blood, killing children. They worshiped false gods, Molech, and others, because we got many false gods today. There are people, anytime you give something more of your attention than you do Father God, that's your God. Amen, amen. They had sex with animals. America, America, are you listening? Amen, amen, amen. I'm talking about getting to know Father God. Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Both Jesus and Jeremiah, if you, when you read what they said, they talked about nations and judgment upon nations. We know Sodom and Gomorrah was judged. Nineveh repented. It was about to be judged and it repented. Amen, 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 amen. Kings, viewers, Father God means all of his word. People involved in breaking God's rules, his laws, they have no alliance with the Lord. Listen to these New Testament rules. I already told you about Romans chapter 1. Amen. Amen. So let me give you a couple more. And they have similar rules or similar items that cause the wrath of God. First Corinthians 6, 9, it says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Effeminate is um, people with a perverse way of thinking. Perverse like men with men. Women with women. That's what that means. Feminine men and manly, butch-like style women. Those who participate, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible, so don't get mad at me here. I'm just reading. Those who participate in homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, whose words are used as weapons to abuse, insult, humiliate, intimidate, or slander, nor swindlers, will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. Ephesians 3, 5, 3 says it this way. But fornicators and all uncleanliness or covetedness, let it not be named once among you as becoming saints. Okay, don't get back into that stuff. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For, th For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Apostle Paul says something similar in the book of Galatians, the book of Colossians, and 1 Timothy. And Apostle John provides a similar list in the book of Revelation. Again, Kings, I'm talking about getting to know Father God. The Lord has rules for his land and consequences, 
result when people, cities, nations do not adhere to his rules. Eviction is the consequence. And guess what? When the Lord drives out a people, he doesn't just drive out the bad people. Everyone who is there goes. They're all evicted. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So pray for America because America continues to move away from the Christian path. It continues to move away from being a Christian nation. As I said, there are consequences for the individual, for the city, and for the nation for being disobedient to the Lord's word. Christians, we have a right to speak to the rules that govern our city, to speak to the rules that govern our state and our nation. Jesus told us that we are a city sitting on a hill that cannot be hid. That means we're a government. Amen? Amen, amen. So we have to speak up. We have to say something. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Another very important characteristic of the Father God is his mercy. Now, in a number of my messages, I have talked about the mercy of the Lord. And so I'm not going to expound on that right now, but only to say that our father is very forgiving. If a person, a city, a nation, a people sincerely ask the Lord for forgiveness and make effort to do better and be better, God will forgive us. And he'll help us. Now, there'll be some hard times and things you'll go through because of this sin. But he'll be with you. He'll be with us. Amen, amen, amen. Remember, I told you, Nineveh was such a city. The Lord had told Jonah to go down to, to Nineveh and repent and, and preach. And... And, and Jonah didn't want to go, so instead of going right, he went left. Long story short, he did finally do what the Lord said, and the city repented, and they were spared. Amen, 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 because the Lord was going to destroy Nineveh. Another characteristic <laughs> of our father is his love. First John, verse four, I'm sorry. First John, chapter four, verse eight says, God is love. His essence is love. God loves you. He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. In other words, you can be as wrong as three left shoes and the Lord still loves you but he doesn't like the sin that you're committing. He will forgive you if you ask him. Father God has amazing love because he'll forget it and won't bring it up. We have a hard time with forgiving people, even ourselves. And honestly, I believe it takes the Lord to help us to forgive others and ourselves. We need God to do that. I don't think it's just in us. Amen, amen. But God, our dad, Elohim, the loving father, he has amazing love. So with that said, I wanna pray with you. If you wanna give your life to him, 
I want to pray with you. If you want to rededicate your life to him, I want to pray with you. Amen. 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 Now, what I like to do is first ask for forgiveness, because when we ask for forgiveness, it gets rid of all of the hindrances. It gets rid of everything that could block us from talking directly to our dad. Amen. Amen. So repeat after me. And I always raise my hands because I surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, forgive me for everything. And I want you to think about that for a minute. Just think about it. Just, Lord, you know what? Forgive me. You know, and I'll admit I'm wrong. When I'm wrong, I'll admit it. I, hey, forgive me. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, the second thing we want to do is ask Lord Jesus to come into our lives. Amen. 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 The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. So repeat after me again. Lord Jesus, Father God, I believe in your son, Lord Jesus, that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come live in my heart, live in my life. Make me more like you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Well, I believe that now if you said that with a sincere heart, you're a born again Christian. But I like to add a little frosting on the cake, which is to ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your life right now with evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, the reason I, I, I do this is because when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings power. Hey, and we need all the power that we can get, especially in these last days. Amen. Amen. Now, the disciples had to wait on the Holy Spirit to come. And on the day of Pentecost, you remember they were up in the upper room and the Holy Spirit showed up. And we know that the Holy Spirit will show up when you receive Christ. What I don't know is if the Lord Father, the Lord Jesus and the Holy Ghost all come at the same time, because I don't think that they do. Also, we saw in Acts that Paul had ran into some believers and he asked them, had they been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And they said, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. So again, we don't know. I don't know if they all come at the same time. We just we know that they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you will know for sure if you ask him to come with evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, Speaking in tongues brings another level of power that people are afraid of because they don't understand it. But the word of God tells us that when we speak in tongues, we speak mysteries and we speak directly to the father. It's our spirit speaking directly to his spirit. So I encourage you to ask for that. Don't be afraid of that. Amen. Amen. When you speak in tongues, when you finish, if you can say, I love the Lord, believe you me, you are not possessed because no demon, no demon is going to say, I love the Lord. Amen. 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 So with that said, repeat after me and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life with evidence of speaking in tongues. Father God. Thank you so much for everything. Father, would you send your precious Holy Spirit into my life and give me evidence of his presence by allowing me to speak in tongues. Fill me with your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, kings, you are in the body of Christ and you got some power with you. Amen. Whose power? Father God's power.
You got new DNA. You're a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I encourage you to get involved with a word-based church, a Bible-based church, a word-believing, preaching, teaching, doing church, so you can learn more about Father God, learn more about who you are in the body of Christ. Come back here and visit me, Latina Cates, and I will help you because I love you and I want you to do well and I want to see you either in heaven or in the new Jerusalem. Hey, before I leave you, go on Amazon and get my book, Messages from God, Experiencing and Understanding the Supernatural. In this book, I talk about seeing Lord Jesus in a dream and he answered Every question I asked him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've seen him a number of times in visions and dreams. And I talk about a number of those events here. I also had encounters with angels and Father God as well. And I teach you how to hear from the Lord because he speaks to us, but sometimes we don't recognize it. Amen, amen. So I talk a lot about that. I am not trying to sell a book. I'm trying to help you with this book. Amen. Amen. It's worth your time. People have told me they read this book and uh, they couldn't put it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, my time is up. I love you so very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. If this message has been a blessing to you and you would like a copy of today's broadcast, visit our website at www.burningbushworldministries.org or write to us at Burning Bush World Ministries, P.O. Box 611-333, Port Huron, Michigan 48061. Or you can write us via email at burningbushworldministries at gmail.com. You can find Latina Kate and Burning Bush World Ministries on Facebook. And you can follow Latina Kate on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week.